The Ghost of the Ether, the disproven theory that is actually real. What if I told you that one of the most famously wrong ideas in the history of science, a concept thoroughly debunked by Albert Einstein himself, and held up for a century as a cautionary tale of scientific hubris, has returned to haunt modern physics? What if the empty space around you, the silent void between the stars, is not a true nothingness, but is filled with an invisible, all-pervading substance, the ghost of the luminiferous ether? This is not an attempt to revive a dead theory. It is an exploration into one of the strangest twists in our quest for understanding. It is the story of how the classical ether, a beautiful but flawed idea, was slain by relativity, only to be resurrected in a new, far more bizarre and powerful form by the strange rules of the quantum world. It is a whisper from the past that suggests that even our greatest truths are temporary and that the universe may be filled with a ghostly medium after all. To understand the ghost, we must first understand the original body. In the 19th century, after Thomas Young and others had convincingly demonstrated that light behaves as a wave, physicists were faced with a logical conundrum. All the waves they knew, sound waves, ocean waves, waves on a string, required a medium to travel through. Sound needs air. Ocean waves need water. A wave is a disturbance in something. To solve this, physicists proposed the existence of an invisible, all-pervading substance, the ghost of the luminiferous ether. This cosmic ocean was the medium through which light waves propagated. It had to have a set of almost magical properties. On one hand, it had to be incredibly rigid and stiff, far more rigid than steel, to support the astonishingly high speed of light waves. On the other hand, it had to be completely transparent and offer absolutely no resistance or drag, allowing the planets and stars to move through it effortlessly for eons. The aether was a beautiful, logically necessary, but deeply paradoxical concept. It was the invisible stage upon which all of physical reality performed. If this aether existed and filled all of space, it should form a stationary, absolute frame of reference for the universe. The Earth in its orbit around the Sun must be moving through this stationary aether. This created a testable prediction. Just as a boat moving through water creates a current, the Earth moving through the aether should create an aether wind. This wind should affect the speed of light. A beam of light sent in the direction of the aether wind should travel at a slightly different speed than a beam of light sent perpendicular to it. In 1887, two American physicists, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley, set out to detect this wind. They designed an ingenious device called an interferometer, an instrument of breathtaking precision that split a beam of light into two perpendicular paths, sent them out to mirrors, and then recombined them. If one beam was slowed down by the aether wind even slightly, it would arrive back out of sync with the other beam, and this tiny difference would shift the interference pattern created when they were recombined. The experiment was more than sensitive to detect the predicted effect. They ran the experiment, they rotated it, they ran it at different times of day and different seasons of the year to account for the Earth's changing direction of motion. And they found nothing. Absolutely nothing. The speed of light was always the same, in every direction, at every time. This null result is arguably the most famous and important failed experiment in the history of science. It sent a shockwave through the world of physics. The ether, the fundamental medium of reality, 
could not be found. Physicists scrambled to save the theory, proposing bizarre ideas like the possibility that the ether was being dragged along with the Earth, or that objects moving through the ether physically contracted in length. Strange patches to fix a leaking theory. Then, in 1905, a young and unknown patent clerk named Albert Einstein offered a radical and elegant solution. Instead of trying to explain why the Michelson-Morley experiment failed to detect the ether, Einstein took its null result as a fundamental truth. He proposed, in his theory of special relativity, two simple postulates. The first was that the laws of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion. The second was that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, no matter how they are moving. This second postulate was a direct acceptance of the Michelson-Morley result. Its implication was profound. If the speed of light is a universal constant for everyone, then there is no need for a single, privileged, absolute frame of reference like a stationary aether. The entire concept was rendered obsolete and unnecessary. With a single elegant stroke of his pen, Einstein slew the aether. For the next century, the luminiferous aether was taught as a cautionary tale, a classic example of a beautiful scientific idea proven wrong by experiment, a ghost to be banished from the halls of serious physics. But a ghost has a way of returning. As physics delved deeper into the quantum realm, a new picture of empty space began to emerge, one that was far from empty. Quantum field theory, QFT, the framework that unifies quantum mechanics with special relativity, describes the universe as being composed of fundamental fields. There is an electron field, a photon field, the electromagnetic field, and so on for every particle. A particle, in this view, is just a localized, excited vibration, a quantum, of its corresponding field. The most fundamental state of these fields, the state of lowest possible energy, is what we call the vacuum. But, as we've learned, due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, this vacuum energy can never be truly zero. The vacuum seethes with energy fluctuations, giving rise to a chaotic sea of virtual particles flashing in and out of existence. The vacuum of modern physics is not a passive void. It is a dynamic, energetic, and substantial medium. It is a quantum aether. How is this new quantum aether different from the old disproven classical one? The distinction is crucial. The 19th century luminiferous aether was envisioned as a mechanical substance, like a fluid or jello, with properties like density and rigidity. Most importantly, it defined a single absolute frame of rest. It was the one thing in the universe that was truly still, and all motion could be measured relative to it. This is the part that was decisively disproven by Michelson-Morley and rendered obsolete by Einstein. The modern quantum aether, the quantum vacuum, is fundamentally different. It is not a mechanical substance. It is a landscape of quantum fields. And, crucially, it is perfectly consistent with Einstein's relativity. It has no preferred frame of reference. The laws governing the quantum fields and their vacuum energy look exactly the same to all observers, no matter how they are moving. It does not have an aether wind. However, it is an all-pervading medium that fills every corner of space-time, and it has real, measurable physical properties. The Casimir effect, the force between two plates in a vacuum, is direct proof that the vacuum's energy is real. The Lamb shift, a tiny change in the energy levels of a hydrogen atom, is caused by the interaction of its electron with the virtual particles of the vacuum. The quantum vacuum acts on matter. It has substance.
So, while physicists rightly abandoned the name Aether to avoid confusion with the old, flawed, classical concept, the core idea of a universal medium that fills space and serves as the substrate for physical phenomenon has made a dramatic and triumphant return. The ghost has been resurrected, not as a contradiction to relativity, but as a consequence of its marriage to quantum mechanics. The empty space between you and this screen is filled with the energetic potential of every quantum field in the universe, a modern aether whose properties we are only just beginning to understand. The story of the Aether is a profound lesson in the nature of scientific progress. It shows that science is not a simple, linear march towards truth, but a complex, looping, and often recursive journey. An idea can be declared dead and buried for the right reasons, based on the evidence available at the time, only to be reborn in a new, stranger, and more sophisticated form when a deeper theory emerges. The classical, mechanical, luminiferous aether is gone forever, but its ghost lives on in the dynamic, energetic, and relativistic quantum vacuum of modern physics. The final whisper from this strange tale is that our quest to understand nothing has led us to the most complex and substantial something in the entire universe. Empty space is not empty, and sometimes the ghost of a dead theory can return to tell us a deeper truth about the substance of reality. Does this story of the death and rebirth of a scientific idea change how you think about scientific truth? Like this video if you were fascinated by the story of the Aether's ghost. Share it with anyone who loves the history of science and comment below. What other disproven ideas do you think might one day make a comeback?